widely considered as one of the most important and influential individuals in human history. His teaching and philosophy greatly affected people around the world and remain influential today. He devised the golden rule as one of the principles of morality, and he exemplified his own brand of humanism. His virtue ethics have been amongst the most important ideas in Chinese history. At some point or another, you've probably heard of Confucius, as he is known as the greatest teacher in all of China. His teachings continue to inspire people today with a profound legacy, not just on China itself, but all throughout Asia. So, who was this man, and what are the lessons that we can learn from him? In today's video, we are going to talk about the inspirational story of Confucius. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Confucius was born on 28 September 551 BCE in Lu, China, which was a province of the Zhao dynasty near modern-day Chufu. He was born in a period of religious and cultural turmoil, and this created many different schools of thought and philosophies all contending against one another. Although there was one ruling family, the real power was in the hands of local warlords and each warlord ruled a feudal state. Aristocrats would often travel from one feudal state to another, offering advice on everything from politics to weddings to war. This would be something that Confucius would later aspire to do. But although Confucius had aristocratic roots, his family was relatively poor at the time. His father was a soldier who died when Confucius was just three years old. He was born out of wedlock as his father's first wife could only bear him daughters and one disfigured son, so his mother was a concubine. His mother brought him up and taught him the values of love of learning and seeking wisdom. Young and impoverished, life was hard for Confucius and his mother. Life was so difficult and hard that Confucius had to help his mother earn his own wage. He served in all types of menial work, from sweeping the floor to picking up food from the market, so he was quite in touch with the livelihood of the people around him. His drive for knowledge set him apart from other poor children, which his mother recognized and nourished. Confucius actively sought out teachers who could instruct him in all areas of life, and his all-round education meant that he was adept in archery, ritual, music, calligraphy, charioteering, and arithmetic, but he also studied history and poetry. Confucius actively studied and learned from the greatest teachers that he could find in his youth. He studied all the classics of Chinese civilization the elegance of poetry. He said, There is no time to stop learning. Only when you close the lid on your coffin can you say you stop learning. But life dealt him a crushing blow. His mother, unfortunately, would later die at less than 40 years of age when Confucius was only 17. She was the only person to ever love Confucius, and her death completely shattered him. He grieved bitterly, and he faced the painful responsibility of burying his mother. In old Chinese customs, it was proper to bury his mother next to the husband, but Confucius had no idea where her husband was. Some of his neighbors took pity on him and took him to the exact location and buried her. He bid farewell to his mother's spirit and grew wiser. Life had already dealt Confucius several blows, growing up in extreme poverty and overcoming daily rejection just to survive, plus losing his mother at such a young age. He was now all alone in the world and faced a very hopeless future. But luckily, at age 19, he married, and a year later, the couple had their first child, their son, Kong Li. Confucius was very candid about his family background, and because he was from a poor and lowly station, he could not enter government service as easily as young men from more prominent families, and he had to become skilled in many menial things. He found employment with the Jisun clan, a hereditary family whose principal members had for many decades served as chief counselors to the rulers of Lu. 
He held modest positions with the Jisuns as keepers of granaries and livestock and as a district officer in the family's feudal domain. His hard work led to more important appointments in the Liu government, first as Minister of Works and then as Minister of Crime. When he reached adult age, Confucius left his homeland and began wandering from state to state in China. His ambition was to share his philosophy with ruling princesses, believing that the powerful leaders had an obligation to lead their people with virtue, rather than leading for power, control, money, or ego. The princess of China must understand their higher purpose, which was to do right and lead by selfless example. Confucius was in particular fascinated with moral and cultural precepts known as Li. Each person was capable of developing this all-encompassing sense of virtue known as Ren. To do this, they had to fulfill a set of ritualistic behaviors known as Li. Confucius was driven to achieve the goals for himself. He had one advantage over others, and that was his extraordinary brilliance. He devoured education, looking through books, studying China's past, looking for China's future, and he finally proclaimed a shocking, radical idea. When people are educated, the distinction between classes disappear. Education was not something you only did up to a certain point. Education was the meaning of life. Confucius believed that people became better by being educated. Confucius did not care about the money you had, but the education that you had. He started a school which accepted disciples from every social class, including people that were not from nobility. This was a revolutionary idea at the time, and this would allow him to become China's greatest teacher. In Confucius's school, poor but brilliant peasants and sons of wealth and nobility met as equals. They forged new bonds, searching for justice and truth. He did not charge any tuition and only requested a symbolic gift. He urged his students to become superior men with absolute honesty and rigorous self-control. Some of his famous quotes included, a superior man thinks of what is right. A small man thinks of what is profitable. A superior man demands much of himself. A small man demands much of others. A superior man accepts his lot. A small man is full of complaints. Confucius's schools grew, but he knew that to change China, he would have to have political influence. He sought government positions in Lu, but no one would give him a position, despite others liking him. He thought he would never achieve his goal, but by 501 BC, when he was 50 years old, a war broke out among the three families who held power in Lu. One of the young rulers, Duke Ding, sought out Confucius to be his advisor and become governor of Lu. Confucius finally achieved his goal. His vision was a human being a series of concentric circles. You start with the person, then to the family, then to the neighbor, to the society, to the nation, to the country, to the world and beyond. He put forth the idea of humanity and kind-heartedness, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and to give knowledge to the common people. When Confucius was governor of Lu, crime almost disappeared overnight and people stopped cheating others. His goal of saving China was getting realized. But as he gained in power, he also gained in enemies the three families united against Confucius as they thought he was a dangerous reformer. They sent beautiful dancers to the young Duke Ding to distract him from his political duties, and due to this, Confucius became bitter and decided to leave. In 497 BC, Confucius's enemies forced him into exile, and he was already 54 years old. Over the next 13 years, he would search all over China for a ruler that would listen to him. 
him and his disciples, he witnessed neglect and suffering of peasants due to high taxes and the crushing rule of the rulers. He found a China that was in social and moral neglect. Confucius knew that only nobility could end the people's suffering, and he knew he had to convince them. He had visions, but the nobility at the time only wanted to enjoy their private lives and expand their territories. He kept looking for new lords and rulers with his disciples, hoping to find someone who would listen, but was unsuccessful. Confucius, in his travels, met another famous philosopher, Lao Tzu, founder of Taoism. Lao Tzu warned Confucius about speaking his mind, as his intelligence allowed him to evaluate people critically but it was at the cost of bringing danger to himself. His blunt speaking would often get him into trouble and make him enemies. Most of China's elite ignored Confucius, and for 13 years he was wandering. He was already 67 years old, facing life's end with his great goal unfulfilled. He was still looking for China's great savior. But one of his disciples convinced him to return to Lu, hoping for another chance to fulfill his mission of a just and peaceful China. However, unfortunately, he was not offered a government position, and his great dream of saving China would not be fulfilled. Confucius grew old in age, and as he faced the end of his life, he continued spending his last years teaching his disciples and transmitting wisdom. One of his most famous disciples, Yan Hui, who was always content in poverty and also loved learning, fell to a dark fate. Unfortunately, at the age of 41, he passed away due to illness. Confucius' son also died at a young age. After a life of self-discipline, Confucius wept for the first time. Confucius said, Heaven has turned against me and fell into deep depression. At the age of 73, Confucius passed away, thinking himself to be a failure. But little did he realize that after his death, Confucius's teachings did not die with him. It became China's dominant thought philosophy for many centuries, and his teachings would live on through his disciples. His teachings were turned into an elaborate set of rules and practices by his numerous disciples and followers who organized his teachings into the Analects. He influences more people than he could have possibly imagined, although he did not live long enough to see it. And he espoused the well-known principle, do not do unto others what you do not want done to yourself. He didn't live to see it, but today, Confucius is known worldwide as one of the most influential philosophers of all time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Our channel focuses on holistic health, meditation, and daily 1% improvement. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and you'll be notified anytime we have a new video. Also, check out the book, The Analects of Confucius by Arthur Whaley, if you are interested in learning more about the teachings of Confucius. The link is in the description below. How has the story of Confucius inspired you? Drop a comment below, and we'll be sure to address it in our next video. Until then, see you next time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification to the right.